Hey guys, Mr. Backer here. This is lesson 6.4. We've got two objectives. We're going to find the dot product of two vectors and use some different properties of the dot product. And we're going to find the angle between two vectors and determine if those two vectors are orthogonal. The dot product is another type of operation that we can perform on vectors. So if we've got vector u being this u1, u2 vector, and vector v is v1, v2, then doing the dot product, u dot v, what we do is we're going to multiply those x values from our vectors together and then add on, multiply the y values together. One thing we should notice is that the answer we get, the product, is a scalar or just a plain constant number. Just a few different properties listed out here of dot products, just because it might be a new operation for us. Taking u dot v is the same thing as v dot u. We can flip the order on that, and that doesn't change what our answer will look like. If we take a zero vector and dot it with vector v, the answer we get is going to be zero. On number three here, we've got u dotted with vector v plus vector w. And as we can see, that works kind of like a distributive property. So we would do u dot v plus u dot w. For number four, if we take a vector v and do the dot product with itself, then the answer we get is going to be the magnitude of vector v squared. And then lastly, if we take a constant times a dot product, then another way we could represent that is taking the constant times vector u and then doing the dot product with v. Or we could take that constant times vector v and then dot it with our vector u. So we've got a few examples to look at with the dot product. First one, we're going to take this 4, 5 vector and do the dot product with a 2, 3 vector. So first thing we're going to look at are those x values. We're going to take 4 times 2 and then add on 5 times 3. So 4 times 2 is 8. 5 times 3 is 15. And then if we add those together, we get 23. Looking at our next example, we've got the vector 2, 2 and the vector 1, negative 1. So if we take 2 times 1 plus 2 times negative 1, well, 2 times 1 is 2, and 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. So we get a 0 answer for that dot product. Last one, we've got the vector 0, 4 dotted with the vector 3, negative 2. So we're going to take 0 times 3 plus 4 times negative 2. Well, 0 times 3 is 0, and 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. So we get negative 8 as our dot product answer on that last one. A few more examples. Here we've got vector u as this negative 1, 3 vector. v is the 2, negative 4 vector. And w is 1, negative 2. So on this first one, we're going to do the dot product of u dotted with v and then multiply that answer by w. So if we look at vector u, that's our negative 1, 3 vector. And we're going to dot product that one with our 2, negative 4 vector. And I'm going to take care of that first. Negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. And 3 times negative 4 is negative 12. So if we add those up, we get negative 14. And then we have to multiply that by our vector w, which is 1, negative 2. And remember, this scalar multiplication works just like the distributive property. Negative 14 times 1 is negative 14. And negative 14 times negative 2 is 28. So there is our brand new vector answer. For our other example, we're going to take u and dot it with 2 times v. So vector u is our negative 1, 3 vector. Now for this other one, I'm going to take 2 times vector v right away. So if we do 2 times that 2, we get 4. And 2 times our negative 4 is negative 8. And now we're going to carry out the dot product with these two things. So negative 1 times 4 is negative 4. And 3 times negative 8 is negative 24. If we combine those, we get negative 28 as our answer. In this example, we're told that the dot product of vector u with itself is 36. And we want to find the magnitude of vector u. Well, remember, one of those properties said if we do u dotted with itself, then the answer we get is the magnitude squared. So if we're looking at this one, the answer we got is 36. So we're trying to figure out what the magnitude is. We just have to do the square root of this. So the magnitude of vector u should be 6 because the square root of 36 is 6. If we're looking at finding the angle between a couple of vectors, so we're going to be looking for some theta angle. It's going to be between 0 and pi. Then in order to find that angle between our vectors u and v, here we've got a formula that says the cosine of angle theta is equal to the dot product of those things, so u dot v divided by 
the magnitude of each vector. So here we've got our vectors u and v. I'm going to write out that formula just so we don't forget what it looks like. So cosine of theta is equal to u dot v over the magnitude of u and the magnitude of v. So let's do that dot product first. If we take 3 times 3, we get 9. Plus, if we take 0 times 5, we get 0. So that dot product across the top is 9. So I'm going to start setting up this fraction. We've got 9 on top. On bottom, let's find the magnitude of u first. So we're going to go square root of 3 squared plus 0 squared. Well, underneath that radical, we get 9. So we've got 3 as that value. And for the magnitude of vector v, we've got the square root of 3 squared plus 5 squared. So underneath that radical, 3 squared is 9, 5 squared is 25. We get the square root of 34. Now this is the cosine of our angle theta. So what I would do is I would punch this right hand side into a calculator so that we could get a decimal approximation. Going to four decimals, when I do that, I got 5, 1, 4, 5 as that decimal. Now in order to figure out what our angle theta is, we're going to have to do an inverse cosine. So theta equals the inverse cosine of our 5, 1, 4, 5 decimal that we just got. And I get an angle of 59.04 degrees. Now we could rearrange that cosine formula to give us an alternate form for our dot product. So just doing some algebra to rearrange this formula, we end up with u dot v equals the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v times the cosine of our angle theta. And when we're looking at the angle between our vectors, there's a bunch of different things that we could run into. We could have two vectors that are pointing in opposite directions. Then the angle theta that we end up getting is pi or 180 degrees. The angle between our vectors could be an obtuse angle, so somewhere between pi over 2 and pi, or 90 and 180, depending on if we're in degrees or radians. Our vectors could create a right angle. Our vectors could create an acute angle, so between 0 and pi over 2, or 0 and 90. Or our vectors could be pointing in the exact same direction, so the angle there would be a 0 degree angle. We're going to spend a little time focusing on those vectors that create a right angle between them. And when we're talking about vectors, if they do create a right angle, we say that those two vectors are orthogonal. So it's a little bit different than you might be used to dealing with. Normally, if things create a right angle, we say they're perpendicular. But when we're talking about vectors, we say they're orthogonal. One way that we can check if a couple of vectors are orthogonal, so we've got vector u and vector v, if when we do their dot product, we get 0 as the answer, that means that our two vectors are creating a right angle. A zero vector is going to be orthogonal to every vector because one of our properties said if we take u dotted with that zero vector, the answer we get is just going to be zero. So in this example, we're going to check if the vector u, which is 2, negative 3, and the vector v, which is 6, 4, we're going to see if those things are orthogonal to each other. So we're going to do their dot product. We're going to take u dotted with v. So if we look at our dot product, we're going to multiply those x's first. So 2 times 6 is 12. We're going to add on negative 3 times 4 is negative 12. We get 0 as our answer. So yes, those things are orthogonal because of that 0 dot product. That's going to be it for this video. Please remember to fill out the Google form linked in the description down below. And thanks for watching.